Okay guys, so this is uh, 9.7 honors and 7.7 .7 math 7. Um, we're going to simulate uh, compound events. And this is a really interesting lecture this time because it's not a lot of problem solving. It's more thinking this through and seeing how we could simulate um, the probability. So how can you use simulations to determine the probability of an event? So the example I'm going to give you here is a tennis tournament. And Sarah serves the ball and when she serves the tennis ball 25% of the time she gets an ace. Okay, So we're going to de design a simulation to predict the amount of aces for 25 serves. Okay, And that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to sit here and work out 50, sorry, 50 serves, okay? But I'm going to show you what we would do to be able to do that. So here's the thing. Sometimes we're going through and we're doing this based off of theoretical probability or we're dealing with, in this case, facts. So in other words, right now she's at 25% of her serves, okay? So we have to know that 25%, right, equals one-fourth. Now, if we know outcomes, we know that there are four possible outcomes. So in other words, when we design this simulation, we need to make sure that we do something with four possible outcomes. Now, this can go a few different ways. Okay, I've thought of three different ways we could do this. So in other words, we could take a die, okay, and I can't draw a four-sided die, but it looks like a three-sided pyramid, okay? And so you could take a dice, a die, Okay, and you could assign one of the numbers because there would be, it's a four-sided, right? And so you'd have four outcomes, one, two, three, and four, right? And we would assign one as the possible outcome that she would serve an ace. So in other words, every time one came up, then we would know as an ace. If two, three, or four came up, then she didn't serve an ace. And you would have to roll the die 50 times. That's why I'm not going to perform it in front of you guys, because you'd have to roll it 50 times and track it to see if it came up to 25%, if she could keep up that 25%. And obviously, this is just a prediction, a possibility. OK, guys? The other way to do it is to go through, I'm actually going to use one of these other ones, and you could get a spinner, right? And we split it into four parts. And again, we would number them, one, two, three, and four, and we would say one, if it lands on, if we spin this and it lands on one, then that's going to mean that she served an ace. If it lands on two, three, or four, she didn't serve an ace. And you would have to spin it 50 times to figure that out. And that's what I mean. Do you see a common trend here? We have to have four outcomes, okay? And that's because it was 25% of the time, all right? The other one is we do cards, right? So I have a card with one, two, three, and four, and we put them into a bag, and we draw out the cards, and then put it back in, all right? Same type of um, simulation. All right, guys, you always have four possible outcomes. You assign one of them to be the ace, and you go through the simulation, okay? So in each case, our sample space is one through four, right? We have four possible outcomes. We assign one of them, and we do it that way. That's it. Um, like I said, you're not going to see me work out anything. It's more of understanding the theory of how you would figure out how to simulate something, okay? So... That's it, guys. Ask me questions in class if you have any problems. And remember, we got the final after this lesson. All right.